Christian country, this country is a Christian country. I stopped going to church. Many of the leaders of our churches are out of touch with the people. They've sold us out. They've destroyed their own reputation. I think if every church leader was like the man you're about to hear from today, the churches would be full again. First of all, congratulations on getting this thing together. It's a fantastic start of a movement on the 1st of June. I'm really sorry that I can't be there in person. I had a prior engagement, but I'm with you in spirit because I think this is vital, getting the country together, not just a right versus left issue, but a Britain versus everything else issue. We have seen in this country our values eroded over the past 10 to 20 years, and our faith has been at the core of that. England has always been a Christian country. There will be people that say, no, it was pagan, blah, blah, blah. No, England, since its foundation as a country, has always been a Christian country. And that's important because it's, it's kind of formed who we are as a people. And from our, from our laws, to our values, to our culture, to our language, all of it comes from the Christian faith. It's all from that same foundation, you know, such as the common law system that we have, where an Englishman's home is his castle. And we should be free to do as we please as long as we're not breaking a law. We don't have the active law system that they have in the EU and the US as an example. But what we're seeing as we take Christ out of education, academia, our legal system, the courts, parliament, as we take Christ out of all of these things, this, this tale that we've been told is that we could fill them with secularism, that we could have political neutrality and that all ideas will be treated equal. But that is a lie. We know that to be a lie. When you take something out, something else has to go in to fill its place. Nature abhors a vacuum. And what we've seen filling that void is Mohammedanism. Mohammedanism, despite what the liberals tell you, is counter to our way of life. It's contradictory to British values, to Christian values. Where Islam tells you to kill your enemy, Christianity tells you to die of yourself. That is a very, very different concept. The Christian faith is about love, faith, hope, and love. The Islamic cult is a death cult founded by a warmongering paedophile. Let's be honest. I'm not, I'm not saying this to be to, to be offensive or to this, is, this is the truth. And we've skirted around this for so long out of fear of causing offence. Well, we have to stop being afraid of causing offence because our country is being torn apart as a result. But the truth is, there are many, many people in this country that want to turn it into an Islamic caliphate. And I don't want Britain to become an Islamic caliphate. I don't want England to become an Islamic caliphate. I look at countries that are predominantly Mohammedan and I see that people are thrown off roofs for having the wrong sort of lifestyle. Women are not allowed to drive or learn and have to cover their faces with all but the letterbox of the niqab. It's wrong. It's inappropriate, it's wrong, and it's not in way, it's not in our way of life. The English way has always been freedom of religion, so that people can worship however they want. The problem there has been that it was always assumed that we'd be worshipping the Christian God, and uh, that is no longer the case, which means that people are worshipping this, this warmongering paedophile, probably under demonic influence and it's, it's tearing us apart at the seams so what is the answer to that the answer to that is return to christianity return to christ and there are many many people on our side who do not have the faith but still see the importance of christianity to leave you with a message i will not call it muslim i will not use the word muslim muslim means true believer they are not true believers people who worship or who follow muhammad are not true believers of god just as they when they say allah akbar it's, it doesn't mean God is great, it means God is greater. These are claims of dominance. That the, this Islam, Islamic faith is centered on taking over. The whole premise is to invade a land and to turn it into a caliphate for Islam. It is to get Sharia 
everywhere. Now, we don't want Sharia. Well, I don't want Sharia. I'm, I'll speak for you. If you don't want Sharia, we all need to stand up and say, we do not want Sharia in this country. And so our politicians have not been listening. They've been importing Mohammedans for a long, long time. Don't know what the reason behind that is, but I can see that there are Christians who are being persecuted in southern Sudan, northern Nigeria, Artsakh, Armenia, China even, all across the world, Christians are being persecuted, but they're not being helped to come to Britain. So if if there are, if the politicians think, yeah, we need more immigrants for whatever reason, be it GDP, jobs, whatever reason they give, at least they could have been importing people with our values, but they haven't. They've been pe importing people who are hostile to our values, people who hate us and hate our way of life, which we can speculate all day on, uh, as to why, but we've seen the fruits of that. We've seen that young, white, British, working-class girls are being raped, abused, and even sometimes killed because they're not seen as, as an ordinary human to these people. In their culture, it's acceptable. The Pakistani Muslim rape gangs have been covered up by the establishment for far too long, from every level, from the local councillors to parliamentarians to the police forces. It's been covered up every way from the councillors. And why? For the sake of diversity, inclusion, and equality. And I think it's time we said, actually, we don't want to be diverse. To be diverse means to remove something to replace it with something else. We don't want to remove Christianity. We don't want to re remove Britishness or Englishness to replace it with a foreign hostile ideology. We don't want to be inclusive of everything. Not all ideas are equal. It, it, we live in a society and we have to contribute to that society. Men contribute in different ways to women, but all of us contribute together to building this kingdom that we live in. And that needs to be recognized again. We need to ignore the people who are saying that men and women are the same because men and women have different gifts. We need to ignore the people who are saying that every culture is the same because every culture is different and some are better than others. And of course, we need to get back to that recognition of diversity, inclusion and equality is harmful for our country. Let's rip that out, rip out wokeness, rip out Islam and put Christianity back at the forefront. Let's remind ourselves who we are as a people. We are Christian people. We believe in the Christian God. We believe in faith, hope and love. We believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for us because we are sinners and he died for that reason to offer us and he rose again to offer us eternal salvation that we might live forever in him. That is a wonderful blessing, wonderful gift that he presents to us and we are the ones who have to accept it by repenting of our sins and acknowledging faith in him. And to do that, to repent of our sins, we need to repent of all this for the last 20 years, this mass immigration, this mass importing of people that hate us, this self-hatred that a lot of people in this country have at the moment. We need to repent of all of that and we need to reclaim our Christian nation for once and for all. So thank you to everyone who's gathered today. Thank you to everyone who's helped organise it. And I hope there's another one soon. And I can't wait to be with you all. God bless you. And let's put Christ back in our hearts and back in the heart of the nation. Calvin Robinson.